we go. All right, so we are still in Sedona and we have some fabulous new rice papers for you. The thing that's really exciting about rice paper is that it is sturdy, it's lightweight, so that seems to be contradictory, right? But it's really not. It's lightweight and sturdy. You can easily adhere it to a wood panel like Elizabeth has done here. It's drapeable, you can wrap it around something pretty relatively easy, easily. Yeah. And what we're gonna show you today are these actresses, though Frida's not technically an actress, but that's okay. She got lumped in. Yeah, she's got a new career. <laughs> so we're gonna show you how to play with these. Um, one of the reasons that I mentioned that it's drapeable and flexible is because I'm gonna, at the end, when I show you my bit, I'm gonna show you something that Elizabeth did that I thought was genius. So now I'm gonna be quiet and let you talk about what you did. It was pretty cool. So I, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed working with these. Um, we, um, we did, we had a lot of fun just kind of playing and coloring with them with really no necessarily end uh, product in mind. But we did come up with the cool things. We put it on the board, and um, and and Barbara's going to show you how I folded folded this up and and added it, put it in a journal so that it folds out it becomes like a tip and it's really really cool yeah she's gonna show you that and um, we had a lot of fun using a lot of different medium on these um, and um, and I think there's even more medium that we didn't media that we didn't use that we could use I mean you could you could use all kinds of different things to color these they come in black and white and then you add the splash of color so well and the interesting thing is is that you went with really vibrant colors if you want to tone that down a little bit again that's always personal choice tone it down I know. tone it down would you what <laughs> that's like when people ask me if I would ever consider using a limited palette why would I use a limited palette? I want to use every crayon in the crayon box, obviously. And she did. <laughs> All right, you ready to get started? Yes. All right, let's, let's go. go. So I'm super excited about these actress uh, female portrait rice papers. There's six designs that come in black and white, and they come on this 30 GSM beautiful rice paper from Joggles printed in Italy. So the first one is Hedy Lamar number two, and she's got a lot of great dark area to embellish and doodle and mark make on. The next one is Hedy Lamar number one. Same thing, lots of dark areas where you can add marks and color. The next one is a vintage actress, unknown. I really liked the way the hair came down in this one and the big hat that could be embellished with a lot of color in the white. And she has a kind of a unique look. Then we have Frida Kahlo number two with the poppy head piece and some great jewelry and this checkered neckline that all would allow for some great color added. And Frida Kahlo number one with the same poppy headpiece and different unique jewelry, clothing, and some white area out here where you could add a lot of color. And then lastly, we have Audrey Hepburn. And she, again, has a lot of area where you could go in and embellish with bright, brilliant color on dark. So speaking of Audrey, what I did with some of these before I added my color on the outside was I hit them with a little bit of watercolor to give sort of a, a skin tone on some, but not all. So I'm gonna show you quick how I did the watercolor, but now I'm gonna show you what I did with these papers. So. My thought with these uh, actress female portrait rice papers is like an adult coloring book. Really, it's about the process and not the end product. The idea is for you to spend time and enjoy coloring, embellishing, doodling, adding to these rice papers and just enjoy the process. They don't have to have an end outcome. You can just enjoy coloring them and you could do the same one you could do like an Andy Warhol you could do the same one with many different colored um additions and doodles and you could display them six up like an Andy Warhol did with Marilyn Monroe or you could just mess with them another um concept I had was to 
adhere to a wood panel. So we trimmed this one down, we adhered it to a wood panel, and then I took my doodles that I did um, on the original and I extended it out onto the wood panel. So the leaves come up here, the circles come out here, the flowers come out here, and the stripes from the fan come out here. So now this A4 rice paper fills the entire 9 by 12 wood cradled panel, and now it can be hung as a finished piece of artwork. I've finished the edges, I've signed it, and look at how wonderfully colorful and creative this is. How much fun was it for me to create that from this? I mean, that was a lot of fun. So that is the Hedy Lamar number two, trimmed down and mounted to wood board and with doodle in the background. So this one was done with Posca pen. So all of that is doodling is done with Posca pen, all the doodling and the embellishing. This one of Audrey Hepburn was also done with the Posca pen with the doodling and embellishing. And I love just making those doodle patterns in the bright, vibrant Posca pen on all that dark. This one of Frida was also watercolored in to give her a little flesh tone. And then if you see, I hit it with some marabou art crayons. You can see a little scribbly doodly in there. Some marabou art crayons, some Posca doodles and embellishing uh, the, the existing flowers and then picking up these leaves and bringing them over this side and then embellishing the jewelry. This one of Audrey Hepburn, I used the woodies on, the Stabilo woodies. So I came in here with the woodies and embellished and did some highlights in her hair and in her eyes. And, and I brought some color into her top. And it was real fun to just scribble with the woodies and know that also if you want to water uh, wash the woodies, they blend and they're water soluble. So there's just some less bold, softer mark making on Audrey Hepburn with the Stabilo Woody pencils. Then we've got Frida again, and I embellished her with watercolor and a little bit of the marabou crayon right here. I brought the marabou crayon in on her eyes. You can see those marks there and on her lips, and I embellished in her hair and the poppies with the marabou art crayons. And the marabou art crayons are buttery and soft and smudgeable, and I used those also on our vintage actress you can see that I've got a nice, and these are the shimmer art crayons. So they've got sort of a nice metallic shimmer to them. I brought them in on her eye shadow and I just got pretty expressive with them in the hat. And they're buttery, soft. You can blend them, soften them with your fingers. You can soften them with water and they really work well on the rice paper. They're a lot of fun to make marks with and also all of these materials could definitely be um, mixed in with each other. So being that we love mixed media, we could certainly mix the marabou with the woodies and the Posca pens and on and on and on. So this is our vintage actress. She's got real painterly now with this scribbly color. She also has watercolor in the face. So the one I um, want to demonstrate kind of quickly is the uh, Hedy Lamar number one. And here she is with Senelier abstract liners. So the abstract liners are the heavy body acrylic paint by Senelier that squeezes out of a squeeze tip container. So you get an actual dimensional, if you can see that, they they dry dimensional because they're heavy body acrylic and they're squeezing out of a fine point. So this really gave me a feel for the Andy Warhol in the pop art way that this bright color was added and I left her face black and white. So it really has that high contrast between black and white and color. But I wanted to show you real quick, if you do wanna add color, like I did in, a, so not this one doesn't, doesn't have color, but as I did in several of these with the color, um, it's really, really easy, and I'm going to show you with a little bit of watercolor. 
So I've got a watercolor brush here. Remember, this is rice paper, so it really takes the paint nicely and it absorbs it in. So I'm just going to sort of blend up a, a little bit of a fleshy color and hit it in the shadows. Put a little bit more red in that. And I'm not um, just doing red and a little yellow. That could be a little too bold. So I'm going to bring in some water and water that down. And I'm going to hit the shadows. And also in here. I just mostly bring the color into sort of the shadow areas. And I'm just working real quickly. It looks darker when it's wet. It's gonna dry a lot lighter. Watercolor dries a lot lighter. So I'm just sort of adding a little bit of color and then blend it out with the water. Just pull it through and blend it, soften the edges with a blend. And that's all I did to add a little bit of color to the other sheets. So like I said, the watercolor dries lighter than it looks and if I can find the one that I just did. Like you can see in this one, that's what the watercolor dries to look like. In this one, I didn't. I left her black and white. Again, the watercolor, the watercolor in Frida. And this one is wet. This one I did with also with the Marabou art crayons. You can see, again, the shimmer. They're the shimmer crayons. You can see the shimmer. It's got the watercolor, but I popped in some more abstract color. So that's a lot of fun. I got some purple in there, blue in there. So it doesn't even have to be just flesh color. You can obviously have fun with that. And when this dries, it will be a little lighter, but you saw how kind of quick and easy that was with the watercolor. So now on Hedy Lamar number one, how I achieved this sort of Warhol kind of pop art raised up dimensional paint effect is with the abstract liners. So what you need to do with the abstract liners is tap them down or shake them down so there's no air bubbles. So when you're squeezing out of this fine tip, you don't get any bubbles. And you're just going to squeeze and it's going to disperse that paint. And the, the harder you squeeze, the wider kind of heavier line you're going to get and it's so fun to have that dimensional line so you see how easy that is and it's going to dry raised up and again we're going to shape shake it and tap it and make sure we don't have any air bubbles and here we've got her a lot of area in her clothing and her hair that's in the shadow that these great bold colors really stand up on. And we can put some more color in her hair. And her jewelry. And these have a nice fine tip, so you can almost get as much detail as you would with a marker because they come out so thin and fine.
So it's as easy as that with the Centelair Abstract Liners to add a nice, dimensional, vibrant line and to enjoy the process of embellishing these actress rice papers. This one with so much white on the outside, we could probably add some interesting color with the woodies out here or bringing in the watercolor, but you can certainly mix your media and you can use different color over black than you do over white and just have fun with these. Just experiment and play and enjoy the process. Don't feel like you have to get caught up in the end product. So there's another way to add a little color on the outside edges and the scribbling and the mark making and the combining of the media I think is a lot of fun. So enjoy the process. And ultimately, if you want to mount any of them to the 9x12 board, I think that's a great way to display if you would like to hang up your finished product. You've seen Elizabeth demo with abstract liners, art crayons, and watercolors, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how you work with Posca paint pens on the rice paper. The nature of rice paper is that it's absorbent, and for whatever reason, most paint would sit on top, but the Poscas have a tendency to get absorbed into the paper. So the solution to that, so your Poscas sit right on top the way that you see here, is to coat the surface, this front side, with some sort of a matte or gel medium. It can be gloss, it can be matte. I would not suggest that you use anything really inexpensive because it's liable to not dry clear. You might see a little bit of cloudy. Um, Golden, Liquitex, Dina Wakely, all of those kinds of things, those are gonna be quality, products that will not give you any kind of a, a quality, excuse me, a cloudy finish. So I have, these are both PC3M crayons, which is what I used pretty much the majority here. I used a PC1MR to go ahead and put some dots on her lash line, her eyes and her lips. And these two areas here were done with woodies. Sorry, I had to think about that. I would suggest, I only put a single coat on here, I would suggest if you're gonna work with the woodies and you wanna blend them because they are water soluble, you should put a second coat on. Now a word of wise or a word of caution, when you are brushing the matte medium, gel medium, whatever it is on here, don't overbrush because you'll start to pill the paper. So get one coat on there, a thin coat, it doesn't wanna be thick, let it dry, and like I said, if you're gonna do woodies or you're gonna bring some water in, I would suggest a second coat. So I'm gonna take, well, this is an emerald green PC3M. So I'm gonna turn this around a little bit and because I have a coat on here, it's very easy to do whatever it is you want. Now I've got dots and lines. So I think in this corner, I'm gonna start with spirals. I just think that it's an interesting motif and you can kind of fill in these areas. Now, because I like dots so much, you see I'm doing them in different directions so that they all don't look the same. Because I like dots so much, the other thing that you could do is to fill in some of that background area with dots. Again, a PC3M. If you wanted a bigger dot, I would suggest a PC5M, but this works just fine too. So you can get this really densely filled in background depending on how many dots you do and the size of them. Super easy, but it's really, really effective, and it changes that black and white version to something that's actually quite dramatic by the time it's all filled in. The other thing that I wanted to show you before we close here today, this is something that I thought that was ingenious that Elizabeth did. So this is a four by six journal page, and this is that A4 sized sheet of paper that she folded up and just inserted. Now we all oftentimes will do Fold it, fold ins, tip ins, fold outs, whatever you want to call them, little pieces that open up in some way, shape, or form to give us this little surprise, something hidden. I thought this, as I said, was genius. This is one of the Frida's. I don't remember exactly which one it was because I think there's a one and a two. But at the end of the day, this closes up and it doesn't take up any more room than a regular page would. So we have these six wonderful rice papers with actresses and the Frida Kahlo, and there's one other in there, the Vintage Actress. So fun shapes, fun faces, and lots of different ways to use them. Good one though, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we are, we, we yeah. <laughs> what we are really interested in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has been such a long day. I don't know about you, sister, but I'm punchy. Yes. <laughs>
Yes. What she's desperately trying to say is we want to see what you do with these because this was kind of an experiment in fun and in something different. So use the create with joggles hashtag. Show us what you do with this, and I, we're anxious to see what else everybody, how people interpret this. Yeah, because somebody out there, just because you said it, is going to do Frida in muted colors and a limited palette. And it's probably going to be amazing. It's just going to be different. And then that way, if you all use the hashtag, you can go in and see who's doing what with the actress rice papers. How fun is that? Because inspiration is a good thing. Inspiration is a beautiful thing, people. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.